Hey, Tony, what are we doing today? We're doing electrical wiring. Really important. Yes, hold this. Ah! Oh. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to my office which means the corner of our master bedroom. Um, so I wanted to take you for a minute through some of the drawing that I did to come up with our wiring plan. Now this is not the wiring plan. If you do electrical design um, for campers, you'll get a bunch of uh, pictures online of how you connect the batteries to the bus bar, how you connect the inverter to the batteries, things like that. And that's super, super important. But that for us is gonna come a little bit later. Right now, we're trying to figure out how do we finish the walls, we wanna close up the ceiling, and we can't do that until we've run the wires. And how do we assure that we've run the right, right wires to the right locations? So truth be told, we'll probably put some conduit um, before we close up the ceiling completely. And that way, if we need to run wires later, we can still do it, but it certainly would be nice to just do it right the first time. So. I'm going to show you what I did to uh, to draw this up. Now, just keep something in mind. All the wiring that we're running is stranded exterior grade wire. Some of it is marine grade. Some of it is not. Uh, I think kind of the heavier stuff is all marine grade. I don't know that you need marine grade wire for a van. It certainly isn't going to hurt, right? It certainly is, is helpful because it's really resistant to corrosion and humidity and weather and things like that. So it is good to use it if you can. But if you don't, at least use exterior grade wire that's meant to handle the elements because it is going to be exposed to humidity uh, and you know anything else you might find outside. So use outdoor graded stuff and you should be good to go. So I am going to take you and show you what I've uh, actually I started. I actually tried to do this on just a whiteboard and this is what I came up with. So it's accurate. The problem is there's so much stuff on it, you can't really use it. So I am gonna show you what this looks like. I am using something called Smart Draw, which I absolutely love. I'm only on a um, trial basis of it right now, but I think I'm gonna buy it because I really like it. The really cool thing about it for this purpose is it lets me draw things in layers. So my base layer is the floor plan of my van. Then I put a layer of wiring on top of that, another layer of wiring on top of that. And the nice thing is I can turn layers on and off as I need them. So as we're working on a specific part of the wiring, I just show that layer and it's really nice and concise and I know everything's gonna go good. So let me bring you into this and show you what it looks like. So this right here is my base layer. This is basically a floor plan of the van. Now this is not drawn to scale. You certainly aren't gonna build anything based off of this, but this is just kind of gives me a high level overview of where everything is in the van. So I can see where my cabinets are, my upper and lower cabinets. Um, here's my shower. I've got some of my bigger appliances like my cooktop, the refrigerator. Here's the max air fan. And here is the um, AC unit. Down here we've got the toilet, we've got our gray water tank valves, some of the lights are in place. Just gives me a place to put wiring on top of um, so that I know where switches go and things like that. And I'm confident that when we close up the, when we close up the ceiling, we've got this well taken care of. Now, I can turn on all the layers if, at once if I want just to show you what this would look like if I had everything. So this right here is the overall wiring diagram for the van. Now, um, it's again, it's pretty complete, but I don't even know how to work with it. I can't tell what everything is, where it goes, not to mention the writing on either side of the screen that gets clobbered by everything below it, but just the center of the screen where all the wiring is, hard to really see what's going on. So that's where the concept of these layers come in. So I'm gonna turn off all those layers and now we're going to start, and I'm starting with kind of the heaviest wires first because I know once I run those, feeding the small stuff through is pretty easy. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to go to my first uh, page, which is solar wiring. 
Solar wiring is one thing. It goes from the solar panels to my solar charge controller that's gonna live in the passenger rear wheel well. Um, and this is the wiring I'm using for this. So this came from Windy Nation. Uh, they have a whole set of, of uh, solar wiring. You're going to want to use stuff that's specifically made for solar environments. So this, the expectation of it is that this is going to sit on top of your roof. It's going to be exposed to UV light. It's going to be exposed to all sorts of elements. It's got a really thick jacket. Um, it's really suited for that environment. So make sure you use solar wire for this purpose. Now I accidentally bought one that has connectors on both ends of it, which I really don't need. I just need the end that goes into the solar panels. The other end I will cut off, feed it through the walls, and then into the solar charge controller. Uh, how did I choose eight? This is eight gauge wiring. How did I choose it? I have a really hard time believing you're going to need anything more than 10 gauge wiring. Um, all the calculations I did, my solar panels actually have a maximum current of 10.75 amps, but that's written on the manufacturer's webpage. So if you put 10.75 uh, amps into pretty much any one of the sizing calculators, you'll get uh, 10 gauge wire. I chose to use eight. So I can basically put the solar panels on my roof and put the solar charge controller probably two houses away. Um, and still be safe with this. So this will definitely work in my van. I like to go a little heavier with the cables because I don't, I can't, obviously I'm not gonna run them again once the, uh, the walls are closed off. So I wanna, wanna make sure that later on, if I choose to upgrade the solar panel, if I choose to upgrade the, the, uh, the charge controller, whatever I'm doing, the wiring is already uh, ready for it. So kinda make the wiring good today and I'll be able to expand it tomorrow. So. That's all that's going on with the solar page. We've got our entry gland. This is where everything pops through the ceiling, runs along the wall, and out to the solar charge controller. And that is it for solar wiring. That'll be great. All right, I'm going to move now to what I call heavy wiring. Really just made that name up. So this is two things we're accounting for in the heavy wiring. We're accounting for the DC to DC charger. So if you remember about I don't know, three videos back, I think it was, we talked about the three sources of energy that we have. We have the solar panels, we have the alternator through the DC to DC charger, and we have the shore power. So last page, we just talked about solar panels. This is the other two forms of it right here. So we've got the starter battery, which has a wire running to a uh, 30 volt, 30 amp DC to DC charger that also lives by the back passenger wheel well. Now that thing accepts up to six gauge wire. So why am I using four? I'm gonna to have to, some, somewhere I'm gonna to have to turn gate four into six. So I'm gonna to have to step it down somewhere. But let's say later I want to upgrade my, my uh, DC to DC charger. Let's say later I even decide, you know what, we're gonna change the alternator in the van and make it more powerful. The last thing I wanna do is say, oh, I ran six gauge wire, so I'm kind of limited. So ran four. It's just, we're just doing it one time. Might as well go the extra mile and just put in the slightly heavier gauge wire so we're prepared for any changes later on. Now I don't have that wire with me. That's actually already in the van and we've started wiring it. We'll show that to you how we're going to do that. But that's already in the van so I don't have it here. The shore power inlet from our last video, you remember we used 10-3 exterior grade wire. That is also in the van. Um, we've got that all hooked up. And we've got that the wire is basically going to go from that inlet across the van under the garage and over to our 3000 watt inverter. So that'll be our second and third sources of energy along with the solar that gives us all our, our uh, power coming in. And I've got a little bill of materials here on the right hand side. So that's all the heavy stuff. Now we're going to move to AC wiring. Okay, now keep something in mind. The, the colors of my wiring does not in any way say that I have blue, I have blue wire or red wire or green wire. This is just so that I can see where stuff needs to run and I know what the different circuits are. So for AC, I've really got three things I've got to account for. We've got the hot water heater. That is a 12 amp device, so I know that I can safely run it on a 15 amp circuit. We've got the induction cooktop, which is a beast. At full power, it runs 16 and a half amps. So we're gonna put that on a 20 amp circuit. 
that's the uh, that's so that accounts for the blue wire so the blue wire goes to the water heater the green wire goes from the AC distribution point to the induction cooktop the only other thing left is this red wire that you see here and that is basically feeding all my AC plugs so anything I want to plug in a blender a hair dryer anything that we've got that requires AC power is going to be fed from that now for that circuit we're going to make that a 20 amp circuit and we're going to make the induction cooktop a 20 amp circuit 20 amp circuit means it needs 12 gauge wire we'll also put a 20 amp fuse on each of those now all the wiring on this page is going to be this stuff. Now this is marine grade, uh, this is the 14 gauge, it says somewhere on here, I can't really read it. This is either the 14 gauge or the 12 gauge, I've got both of them. Um, am I saying you need marine grade wire for everything in the van? No, but if you can, it certainly is, is nice to have it. I can't remember where I got this, I'll link it below. But uh, this is everything we're gonna use for the AC portion of the van. Now, we're gonna move to the DC side. Now, most of the stuff in the van runs on DC, as you can imagine. So from here, these pages are gonna get a lot more full and we're gonna, there's gonna be a lot more wires, but they're thinner wires, so they're a lot easier to run. So I've divided the uh, DC power into uh, two pages. So one of them I've called DC switched wiring. So these are the few devices that are in the van that actually require an on-off switch that run through DC and then my next page is DC non-switch that's stuff that gets a constant supply of electricity and then maybe there's a remote control or a switch on the device that turns it on or off it just needs a constant flow of 12 volt DC to it so I've divided those into two pages so this page is actually pretty easy the only thing I account for in this page are the two ball valves that go on the uh, gray water tanks one for the shower one for the sink and to be honest if I can combine those into one gray water tank I'm going to because they are pretty close to each other I'm going to try to combine them if I can so we start with our DC distribution block this is the source of our DC power those wires go to a switch I've got one switch for each of the uh, ball valves and then from there we feed out to each of those to each of those ball valves. To be honest, I probably could run one wire from the DC distribution block and split it somewhere in here and run it to each of these. That would be totally fine too. In fact, I may end up doing that. So it kind of keeps the wiring down a little bit. The only other thing on this page that I've got to consider is the 3000 watt inverter on off switch. That comes in the box with the inverter. I just got to remember to run it. So that's one of the benefits of this thing, right? I'm gonna have so many, we're gonna run so many wires that there's gonna be something that we're just gonna forget, especially if it's sitting in the box with the inverter. So by drawing this here, I remember, I've gotta open the box to the inverter, grab the switch and make sure I run that one before we close up the walls. So another good reason to do this. Okay, DC non-switched wiring, so this is probably the heaviest loaded page because there are a lot of devices that run DC that don't require a switch. So again, I've got to separate it into pretty much every color of the rainbow here just so I can see the different circuits that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna start here. Now the gauge of these wires change depending on what they're feeding. So the first thing is our 12 volt refrigerator. Manufacturer says it requires 10 gauge wire. Okay, we're gonna use 10 gauge wire. So small wire go small length of wire goes from the DC distribution panel over to the refrigerator there's no on off switch the thing is always running next DC distribution block over to our uh, AC unit again you control that with a remote control so that requires 12 gauge wire which we'll probably use this stuff over to our heater this is a much smaller power draw so I think this one only requires 18 gauge wire um, again, it's all stranded. It's all exterior grade stuff. Green goes to the nature's head toilet. This uh, brownish color goes to our water pump and the water pump actually clicks on when it realizes there's been a drop in pressure. So you open up a, uh, a spigot somewhere, pressure drops, water pump kicks on. So it knows to do that. So it doesn't need an on off switch. You could put one in if you just want to kill access to the, to make sure the pump doesn't turn on. So maybe you've got to work on the water. In fact, that's probably a good idea. If you've got to work on one of the water pumps 
and you're going to release the pressure and suddenly the uh, the water pump kicks on. The switch would be good, but to be honest, we can just pull the pull a little fuse if we need to and drop it from the distribution panel. So either way, it works. This little lavender, col lavender color feeds these two reading lights. They've got an on-off switch on them. They don't draw much power, so that'll be a small 14-gauge wire, which is this stuff. A uh, 12-gauge wire goes to the max air fan, and then a 10-gauge wire is going to go out to our DC plug. So DC plug is where we plug in laptops and phones and stuff like that to charge. And I'm using 10-gauge wire because my Mac, my 16-inch Mac, it takes up a lot of power. In fact, it heats up my power brick pretty good. So I want to make sure what's in the fan behind the walls is sufficient to handle it. So uh, bill of materials over here at the right tells you everything you need here. And now we are on to the last page, which is our puck lighting. Four distinct circuits of lights here. So I'm going to start with the, uh, and I think this is all 14 gauge wiring. I'm probably going to run something different for the red strands, which is the main puck lights, because I actually want to control that from two places. So I'll need three conductors in that jacket. So it'll probably be 14 gauge three wire. Everything else is going to be standard 14 gauge two wire, uh, which is actually this stuff. So Everything's going to run through here, so I'll probably bundle three of them together for the uh, for the uh, three-way switches. So first thing, green, blue, from the DC distribution panel over to a switch, and then that switch is going to control one, two, three, and four uh, puck lights in the front of the van. The back of the van is controlled by the green part, so green goes to a switch. The four back lights are controlled there, so. I can hit that dimmer and it brings those lights on and off. Black is going to go to a switch that controls the two lights above the shower. So that'll be just outside the shower. So before we get in, we click, click it on and off from there. The only complicated thing here is the red circuit. So that's what controls all of the rest of the puck lights within the van. And I want to be able to control that from two different places. So one when you get in the van and one, you know, you're getting in bed, you realize you forgot to turn the lights off like I do here all the time. It's nice to have a different place to turn it off from. So we're going to have one switch. We're going to have one switch here in front of the van, one switch here behind the van. And then that red wire is going to pass through each of these lights. These will all be uh, connected in parallel. There's a bunch of videos out there that show how to connect these wires, so I won't, uh, I won't bore you with that. But that is pretty much it. All puck lights are connected in parallel. That means basically we connect all the positives together, we connect all the negatives together, so everything sees the same voltage. If you try to connect them in series, you're gonna have some situation like some old old school Christmas tree thing where one light goes out and the rest of them go out. Um, also, you'll probably end up in a situation where the first light is really bright and it gets dimmer as you go down the circuit. So everything's connected in parallel on this page. So that is pretty much it. That is uh, what we're going to follow to get this thing wired up. And I'm done talking, so I'm going to have me some pomegranate juice. Ooh. Yummy. Well, we are about to start wiring. Uh, got the wire in hand. We got our diagram up, but we just went over, so we're excited to get this going. So thanks so much for joining. Uh, if you liked the video, please click the like button, and we'd love for you to subscribe if you want to follow along on our entire van build process. We'll be back next time when we will actually start getting this wiring together. So we'll show you every step we did, where we run it, and how we did it. So see you then.